and welcome to Shaping the Irish Flute, the podcast about Irish flute players around the world who are shaping today's Irish flute style. If you like the show, feel free to sign up for the newsletter on the website irishflutelessons.com, on the Facebook page Irish Flute Lessons, and on the YouTube channel Irish Flute Lessons to receive our upcoming updates. Thanks for watching. So we're now with Matt Dean, a flute player from Newcastle, England, is it, Matt? Correct, yeah. And uh, he's going to tell us more about his background and uh, and his history on the Irish flute. Um, so first of all, hello, Matt. Thanks for joining. A lot of fun. Thanks for asking me. Um, I have a few questions for you. And the first one is, is becoming a classic now. Can you let us know how and when you start the Irish flute? So I started, um, like a lot of people really, I started out on the tin whistle when I was about nine. Um, I was a, a little bit later than a lot of people uh, in Ireland would have started. You'd, you'd generally do it in primary school as a as a first instrument in primary school over here. But I started when I was nine and um, I progressed on to the flute then when I was around about 12. So, um, and that was all done through the Tyneside Irish Centre in, in Newcastle. There's a big, um, there's a big Irish community in Newcastle, and for me, growing up, um, there was, you know, there was endless Irish music being played, and uh, so I was kind of steeped in it through the family, um, bringing me down to coldest classes and stuff like that. So, okay, so so you were lucky enough to be surrounded by Irish flute players in, who influenced you. I'm guessing early on. Well, like there was a couple of uh, very good flute players came out in Newcastle. Um, Thomas McAvoy was one of them. Um, Claire Mann uh, was another. But they were they were all slightly older than me, and it kind of moved on when I started the flute. So I never really there wasn't really many flute players around when when I was learning. So I'm I'm self taught. Um, mainly, like you know, the guy that ran the coldest classes was a fiddle player. So I picked up tunes from him, but I never really had any any lessons on the flute. Uh, it was just all like a lot of people really back then. It was just like learning from CDs and trying to pick up what you could when you could. Like, yeah. And uh, were you lucky enough to have like sessions in your area? Yeah. So um, there was when I suppose when I was that age, there was two main sessions there in the Irish Centre, which were on a Thursday and Friday evening. And um, they would be the two main ones that I went to. But as I got older, by the time I was 15, 16, I'd say you could nearly have a session every night of the week somewhere in Newcastle. So, as a, you know, I, even if you wanted to get away from it, you couldn't. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, self taught, um, who influenced your flute playing the most, you would say, in all the flute players that you listened to and, and maybe other instrument players? Yeah, I suppose it wasn't really predominantly flute that I was listening to, but I'd, um, the usual suspects, you know, Matt Malai, uh, I'd be listening to a lot of the Bothy band, Brian Hughes. Um, I remember getting Brian Hughes' album when I was um, with my dad over in Dublin. I think we'd just been to a flat and uh, went into the music shop there and picked up Brian Hughes' first album, Whistle Stop. And um, I think I played that album until it decided not to work anymore for me. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, it wasn't really predominantly flute, but you know, uh, Matt Malai, Harry Bradley, um, and then later on, um, Jean Michel Vellian. Um, the, and it kind of, I kind of broadened after that. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't just traditional music I was listening to. I was listening to a few more out there kind of things, but the jazz and stuff like that as well. And of course, fluke and bioga is uh, the, I'd, I'd listen to quite a lot. Okay, all right. And you mentioned your dad bringing you to Dublin, so your your family was was pushing you to play Irish music. And are you coming from a music family? Do you have any relatives playing? I to? I came from a music family, as in both of my parents both uh, went to music college and were both classical musicians. But um, um, they never played traditional music. I have no Irish background at all. Um, I think dad traced something back to like fifth generation or something like that. But, Sorry. you know, as a, I have no Irish background. But then, like, dad would bring me out to all the flas and um, 
he'd bring me to to all the sessions and stuff like that. And then rather than him just sitting there like a, a spare part, he he took up the flute and whistle himself as well. Then so as uh, he He's still, the <laughs> he still goes, yeah, he still goes to the session on the Thursday. It's the only session now in the Irish Centre in Newcastle that's still running, but it's uh, on a Thursday night there. So he still goes down to that now and then. All right. And you mentioned you play several styles. It's true. I, I went on the Facebook, you know, and, and creeped out on all the videos and stuff. So you do yeah. play Irish traditional music, but you play other styles too on the flute. Yeah, I play a lot of different stuff. I suppose, um, like, by the time I was 15, um, there had been, like, a lot of live bands playing, um, not just, just, like, the kind of ballad band stuff, but I, I, I joined a ballad band when I was 15 or 16 moved on then to another ballad band and um in the meantime i was playing with a few singer guitar uh singer guitarists and singer songwriters and like that my my style really changed then i was you know i was starting to look at different avenues and um trying to bring different styles into it like i, I think a lot of people might say that my traditional playing is a little bit out there and they're probably right but you know i i'd say if i was playing in the one style the whole time i'd probably get bored so i like to i like to vary things and mix things up a bit fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> um so so what, what are you exactly doing today i think you're a teacher you're teaching flues you also yeah. play in several like bands right yeah, that's right. So I'm teaching, uh, mainly teaching. Uh, I teach full time. I, I teach at the local college branch here in Listowel in County Kerry. And um, I teach in uh, a couple of the primary schools around here as well. So um, teaching is what takes up most of my time, which is great. I love teaching and love just being able to pass on the pass on any knowledge and pass it on to the younger generation and try and keep the music alive, you know. But then yeah. Yeah. Um, on the side, um, I'm playing with a couple of different, mainly singer guitar players now. I was in a band for a while, but as um, I got out of that side of things when the teaching got so busy. So um, I'm doing this um, a little bit with different singer guitar players around the place and so just trying to keep it fresh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, what do you say, like the most about teaching the flute to younger kids and and uh, you know beginners? I love to see the progression. You know, like they they can, like I started out, like I said, on the tin whistle and moved on to the flute. Then, and I suppose that's kind of a natural progression to to move on to the flute. So it's nice to see some of the really young ones coming in and they start out on the tin whistle. And they might go off and they get a taste of the tin whistle and they get a taste of the music. They might go off and go and um, play a different instrument, which is great. But they got the foundation from playing the whistle. And then, um, so it, it's it's nice to, it's nice when, you know, they get that little bit more confident in what they're doing and you see you start seeing them going out and playing in sessions and stuff like that. <laughs> Excuse me. And there's a lot, there's a good few of my students now actually, you know, moved on. They've got, they've got, uh slightly older now and might have gone off to college and stuff like that and they've kept it up either nice. uh, going into going into college or they've just kept it up as in you know they're still going to regular sessions and stuff like that and that's great to see like yeah and um so you mentioned you were self-taught uh with your perspective and your history on the flus would you say now that you you are happy about that, or would you rather have a teacher today? Like, where do you see the benefits in self teaching and having a teacher? And it's always like you know, kind of a question, especially for those instruments that you can self teach. You know. Yeah. Um, I suppose it would have made things a lot easier for me growing up. Um, like if I did have a teacher. Now I did go to Scalasia and a few workshops and stuff like that. You really can see them on So. Um, like, I think it's probably benefited me a little bit more in the fact that because I was self-taught, I I didn't I didn't have a teacher teaching me a, a particular style. I find a lot of people they have their teacher and they almost mimic their teacher, so yeah. they mirror yeah. what their teacher is doing, and then they become another one of them. Whereas 
when I'm teaching, I like to I like to let them experiment. So I don't want them to just be playing the same way as I'm playing. Now naturally they're going to pick up a lot just from listening to me playing anyway. But I'd rather them like experiment with it a little bit more and like find their own feet and find their own style and find what they like. So as um like one student I had there, she's gone from me now, like I said, she's gone to college and um she was with me for years. But she very much has it that kind of Belfast punchy style of flute playing. And uh mm-hmm. like that's because she just because she loves that style and uh she listened to a lot of Harry Bradley and stuff like that. So as um like that's one example of although she's been taught by me, she didn't pick up my style. She she ventured off and she she created kind of a bit of her own style mixing up like her own style with mine and listening to other flute players and other bands as well. So Okay. And uh what would be your this is like a recurring question we have on the Facebook page. It's what, like what would be your piece of advice for someone who's completely new to the flute? And one wants to start like wh- where do you start what's the what should i do first you know um like for flute really like the like the big thing and the, the one thing that i always stress to to anyone starting out is try and perfect your tone so if you can perfect your tone and get a nice strong solid note on every note going down the going down the flute a lot of people try and start with d and like if you if you haven't played a flute before, especially a traditional flute, like you probably it's know, it's optimistic. Yourself. Yeah, like you you you're going to struggle to get that deep. So yeah. unless you've got a very good, well played in flute, and it might just be that little bit easier. But start at the top. Start with no fingers. Start with just the head joint, and try and get a nice, straight, steady tone. And uh, if you can do that with just the head joint, move on to the to start to try and get the fingers on and. Is um get your fingers moving as well. Like try not to be so rigid with it. Whereas you're you know you're sticking your fingers down on the flute and really making sure you're covering them properly. Try and be a little bit more relaxed with it and get the tone and your breath control. Breath control is another big thing. So like once you've got the the tone down, like and you can play each note on the flute clearly, then yeah, you can start you know p- picking a couple of simple tunes and trying to get through those tunes and perfecting them. But you really need your breath control to get the rhythm into the tune as well. So tone would be a big, big thing for me, though. And then technique after that. Yeah, it is. I, I was last week with John Wynn on the podcast, oh, yeah. and he mentioned learning with Patsy Hanley. And the first thing he did was take a bottle and, okay, blow through the bottle. And if you can get a sound, then we'll move on to the flute. And it's... Absolutely. It's. I think it's. It's a fun way to, to see it. Um, yeah, I do that with a lot of my younger students as well. Is get them to because you know it's a bit of a novelty for the young ones as well. It's like oh geez, you can get a note out of a bottle. Like so, when they get used to that, get them playing with just the the head joint and see see how they go with that. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I mentioned you're you're from Newcastle originally, although you moved to Ireland now. Yeah. Am I correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, do you see any like uh, similarities in the in the style of traditional music? Like, did you bring some of the traditional English style to your own, your own music? Is there any? Like... Um, well, see, Newcastle have a um, a folk degree course, so it, it um, it's it mainly looks at a lot of there's a lot of English and Northumbrian music. Um, so there's uh there's a big difference in the style although there is similarities there's a big difference in, a, in the style from northumbrian music to traditional music um but i wouldn't I, I never really played i never really played a lot of northumbrian or any english folk music really it was always traditional music but i suppose the lads that were doing the the northumbrian style of things did did look at some of them looked at a little bit of traditional Irish music. Some of them played a lot of it, but um, you could you can hear the difference in style. But I I wouldn't say I brought too much of the style with me, if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. A, okay. I um, so what would be your two uh, go to tunes? You know, if you go to a session, you have to start. What would be the first tunes that you'll play in a set, for instance? Um. 
over the last few years really like i brought out my first album there in 2012 and i put two tunes together on that um phyllis's birthday and Armand sound and um for some reason those two tunes just stuck with me uh seemingly forever so as uh like if i was to pick up a flute um that would be phyllis's birthday would be one of the one of the go-to tunes it's a great reel and um the green mountain was another one as well i learned the green mountain years ago when i was about 13 14 and um it was just one of those tunes that you can do so much with like you can put endless variations into the tune without taking away too much from the tune and it was a tune that just seems to really flow and i think brendan Munholland actually mentioned the green mountain as a go-to tune as well and it's just yeah. a really great it's, it's a really good flute tune, tune actually it's a very good flute tune and you like i say you can do so much with it uh like and i like to like i say I, a lot of people might think i'm a, my flute style is a little bit out there and i like to i like to do things with tunes that uh, some people might not agree with but that's one i mean that's you. that's your own style and i think that's what we're all trying to achieve you know as a flute player yeah. you're always looking at you know your own style so it's great Absolutely. that you have yours and, and so yeah you mentioned uh, an album so you are mixing traditional music your own composition in the in the style of, of traditional music right um on the first album it was um it was all traditional music and um i think there was two tunes of my own on the album um but the rest was all all really traditional and uh, i suppose it didn't really portray my style the album I, I i did do the album and i was happy with the album but then it didn't really get across like who i am as a flute player so uh i'm in the middle now of um i'm at the still at the you know the basics of doing my second album at the moment so um that was uh, my that was my transition for you <laughs> so yeah the second album is uh it's well on its way, but as uh, obviously due to lockdown and all that, as I haven't been able to get to the studio yet. But the the tracks are I I done a, a full um, demo recording at home of all the tracks, and the the CD is going to be all my own compositions. So there's going to be right. um, none of your standard traditional tunes on it. It's going to be my own all my own compositions from over the years, and there's a good few tunes wrote during the lockdown about three months of not being able to go anywhere so there was a yeah it was written there for for it as well did you also get to record like tunes every day for the lockdown COVID thing yeah so pretty much every day i put up a video um on facebook on the on the facebook page and uh a lot of it like towards the end of it like i i i got into album mode of doing a, an album of my own composition so whenever there was a tune row i threw it up on facebook and as uh you know, they, they seem to get a a good response so far anyway so we'll see what it's like when the when it's all put down on the album yeah well, you mentioned covid and it's obviously changing a lot of things everywhere um what's your what's your perspective on the future for professional musicians as yourself uh, but, you know it's it's going to be tough like like any musician is eager to get back out there and get playing and you know even just be sat in a, in a session and playing a few tunes with a few friends but like you know we're, you're, just, you're gonna have to be extra careful now and as um like it's i think it's going to be very strange for the for the near future anyway and you know there's a lot of like arts and culture isn't really supported very well in a lot of countries like so i can imagine like a lot of small theaters small music venues they're going to really struggle if they can't reopen and open soon like there's already a few in ireland that i know of that are that are struggling and may not open again mm. so, and a lot of them are community funded and as uh charity funded and if people aren't going to these venues because they're locked down they're just not making money they're not going to be able to sustain um being locked down for too long which probably will result in a lot of them closing down 
So it, it yeah. should be interesting to see what's going to happen in the next few months and see. Do you have any perspective on the reopening for the sessions and the bars? Sorry? Do you have any like, uh, idea on when the sessions are going to start again? Um, not really. Going by our government guidelines, um, like bars can reopen in the next few weeks. Um, but the, the guidelines are strictly no music, no DJs, no live music. So um, until that changes, um, it's going to be like most bars, especially around here and in the tourist areas of Ireland, like um, you go into a bar, there'll be a guy sat there going on with a guitar and singing, and, or there'll be a trad session, or there'll be an early trad session, and they'll have a live, live band after it. Yeah. And, um, like, you know, the pubs, the pubs, especially, I think, will suffer for the for for the foreseeable future, anyway. Because if they can't have live music, yes, a lot of people want to go and drink and have a be out with their friends and what have you. But the music just adds to the atmosphere, it adds to the night out. And if you can't have that, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be quite a boring night yeah. out. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways. Uh, Back to happy thoughts and uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> and positive perspective. So, new album on the way. Uh, do you have a uh, website or Facebook page that you'd like to share? We'll, we're going to put it on the screen when it's edited. So, so I've um, I'm in the middle of um, sorting out the website at the moment. So I don't have a website live at the moment, and I don't even know what it's going to be. My old website is down, and um, I plan on rebuilding a new one. But I have the Facebook page, which is just Matt Dean Music. Um, and all the updates will be up there, and you'll see when the album's coming out. And there'll probably be a few more videos here and there um, along the way as well. So I hope so. Do you have any expected release date for the new album? I am not sure, because like I said, like my first album, I, uh, like I say, I was happy with it, but it didn't really um, show who I was as a flute player. So this album's going to. I done that first album, I think, in like two and a half days or three days in the studio. But this one's going to take a good few months to get right and get. Hmm. There's going to be some quite out there variations and um, arrangements and stuff like that. Like one of the tracks, I have a full orchestral um, arrangement going down on one of them. So as um, we kind of have the basics of the orchestral part done, but as uh there's there's a lot of work to go in that so i'm hoping maybe towards the end of the year start of 2021 i, I, I should have it out hopefully but yeah. like uh, and we okay. should be able to listen to it in a pub with a nice pint of guinness <laughs> hopefully hopefully by then you should be able to uh, yeah. that, that would be that would be nice it would. Uh, I have one last question for you. For you know, we have lots of flute players on the podcast, obviously, yeah. and uh, usually the topic is about the flutes. So, which flutes do you play on currently? Um, I've an Aim and Carter flute, um, which I uh, I got when I was sixteen, and I'm still playing the same one. Um, I, you know, I couldn't see myself changing. Like it, the flute is kind of part of my arms and as um i've tried lots of different flutes and like they're all nice but when you have a flute that you've had for 16 17 years you know it, it's it's kind of blown into what you like and as uh yeah. i find it very difficult to change now so i have a d aim and cotter a c aim and cotter and an e flat aim and cotter the whole family uh, the whole family and hopefully one day it might it might make me a b flat it doesn't make too many of them so as uh, I hope to get a B flat one of these days. The first one, Guinness or Smithix? Guinness. Jig or real? Uh, real. <laughs> That's a <little laughs> are, are tough, actually. Uh, F or B flat? F. Flute or whistle? Flute. Blackwood or Mahane? What? I have to say that it's a flute interview. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, like John Wynn, for instance, was is playing on the flute and on the whistle, but I usually yeah. get flute as an answer. That's true. <laughs> um, Blackwood or Mopane? Uh, Blackwood. As Black, I always just find Blackwood a bit more durable and the stronger wood is a nicer tone out of it. Okay. Pipers or Rockstro Grip? Uh, Rockstro Grip. Crown or Roll? I have to say crown because all my students will be laughing at me if I don't because I really, really plague them to get their crowns right. So crown. Well, okay. I mean, that's a tough ornament. So it's going to yeah. take them a few years to get that down. <laughs> and finally, slow or fast? Fast. I love playing okay. slow, like slow airs and um, waltzes and stuff. I love playing all the slow airs and stuff like that. But as uh, I do tend to play quite fast. So as a. Uh, so fast okay well thank you very much matt it was really nice to have you on the show today Not a problem. Uh, do you have any last piece of information you want to share um about upcoming you know videos gigs online or um i don't think so no there's you know there's not a lot coming up now obviously everything that was in the diary for this year is kind of out the window now and as um for the you know the for the foreseeable the the main work now is going to be getting back to teaching and yeah do you, do you teach to, online at all i do a bit of online teaching but i only started doing the online teaching this year so it was um the most of the most of my time was taken up by teaching um teaching here and as um i just couldn't see there i couldn't find the time to do online teaching but since the since the covid and what have you as uh all my teaching's gone that way so as um, okay. hopefully now from september onwards i'll be able to get back to normal and get back into the schools and start teaching again right. yes. okay well we'll find a facebook page right here below on the screen where we can find you for online lessons and Perfect. uh thanks again for being with us have a great day no problem thanks for asking me thanks bye cheers Thank you for watching. It was another great show in the series Shaping the Irish Flute. If you liked the show, remember to give us a thumbs up or a like down below the video and to join us on the newsletter irishflutelessons.com, on YouTube, on Facebook. Leave us a comment, share a message with us. We're always happy to read your thoughts and feedback. Have a great week and see you next week.